it's been known for some time that caffeine has different effects on different people. While most people get a stimulant effect from caffeine, others feel jittery and experience heightened anxiety levels. In fact, years ago, they found that 20% of the people cannot tolerate drinking coffee in any amount. They called it caffeinism because when they drank coffee, they had extreme anxiety. Uh, interestingly enough, this is a side note, uh, if, you, if you do get jitteriness from coffee, if you uh, use a uh, supplement or called L-theanine, and a dose is and a dose anywhere from 100 to 200 milligrams. It'll immediately cease the jittery and anxiety feelings of caffeine. But that's another subject. I just wanted to throw that in. Now, the reasons for these variable responses to caffeine remained a mystery until a few years ago. Obviously, there was some sort of genetic component, but they weren't sure exactly what. At that time, research appeared showing that anyone who anyone how anyone responds to caffeine is based on genetic mechanisms. Specifically, it depends on whether you have a certain ver whether you have certain variants of a gene called CYP1A2. This gene codes for the primary enzyme in the liver that metabolizes 95% of ingested caffeine. It turns out there are variants of this gene known as polymorphisms. Uh, scientifically called single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs is another word. Basically, a slight variations in genes that cause different effects. It's get, it gets into a complex area of genetics. I'm, I'm not going to go into it in this video, so don't worry about that. But anyway, th these polymorphisms determine how fast caffeine will be metabolized. And this has a major effect on whether caffeine produces positive or negative health benefits. Now, the, the a variant of the CYP1A2 gene called the AA variant, that's double A. The double A variant gene produces a rapid metabolism of caffeine, while another variant called the AC variant produces a slow metabolism of caffeine, and still another variant called the CC variant produces a very slow metabolism of caffeine. The significance of this is that the longer caffeine stays in the body, the greater the chances of not only side effects, but also less ergogenic effects in sports and exercise. Most of the health benefits linked to caffeine, such as reduced risk of cardiovascular disease, cancer, and diabetes, are associated with the fast metabolizing, or AA, gene variant. On the other hand, those who have the slow variants, such as AC or CC, show a 36% greater risk of cardiovas cardiovascular disease if they consume three cups of coffee and a 64% uh, percent, uh, greater risk of cardiovascular disease if they drink four cups of coffee a day. Slow metabolizers of caffeine also show a greater tendency to high blood pressure, impaired fasting glucose that is a forerunner of type 2 diabetes, and less protection against cancer. You can say that those who are slow metabolizers of caffeine show reverse health effects when they consume three cups or more of coffee each day. Now, 80%, I should tell you, uh, depending on which text you read, 80% of people are fast metabolizers, meaning that 80% of people don't really have any problems with coffee and it's actually healthy for them. It's the other 20% that are the slow metabolisms. They're the ones that ex could experience problems or get no benefits from coffee or caffeine. Not, not coffee, caffeine, because there's things in coffee, which I'll get to later, polyphenols, which are nothing to do with caffeine. They do provide health benefits. What about the ergogenic effects of caffeine? Ergogenic means increasing work capacity. Anything that allows you to increase work capacity translates into being able to train harder, more intensely, with less fatigue. So when you're talking about an ergogenic aid, you're talking about something that helps you train harder, compete more successfully in athletics or whatever. Most studies show that caffeine increases muscular endurance and, and, and also increases the ability to train harder with less fatigue. Caffeine reduces fatigue by stimulating the central nervous system. It is structurally similar to a substance produced in the body called adenosine that produces relaxing effects and tends to increase feelings of fatigue. Because caffeine is structurally similar to, to adenosine, it can block its adenosine receptors which, ha which have a stimulant effect and reduce feelings of fatigue. This is similar to the way a drug called Navidex works. Navidex is also known as tamoxifen citrate. It's often used by bodybuilders and athletes to block the effects of estrogen. For example, uh, anabolic, some anabolic steroids such as testosterone can convert into estrogen through actions of the aromatase enzyme. Uh, now, when you take the drug um, tamoxifen or uh, Navidex, 
because it's structurally similar to estrogen, it can block the estrogen receptors and prevent estrogen-related uh, effects because estrogen only could produce effects when it could interact with the receptors. Well, in this situation, the same situation goes with caffeine and adenosine. Caffeine is very similarly structured to adenosine. It can occupy or block adenosine receptors and therefore block the effects of adenosine. This would have a stimulant effect and reduce feelings of fatigue. Adenosine is produced during muscular contraction and adds to muscular fatigue during training. When adenosine binds to its receptors in the central nervous system, the release of neurotransmitters is slowed, as is the rate of neural, neuronal firing. In other words, the, the, um, the uh, central nervous system, the, the, your, your uh, neurons don't fire as fast, which, you know, you, you feel it as fatigue, tiredness, you know, that type of thing. By blocking adenosine, caffeine promotes maximal voluntary muscular contraction and force production. It can also delay fatigue by interacting with the primary muscle contractile proteins, actin and myosin, and through interactions with potassium release. Studies show that those who are fast metabolizers of caffeine show greater exercise and sports-related benefits when they ingest caffeine, while those who are slow metabolizers show little or no benefits. For example, in one 2012 study of experienced cycling, cyclists who participated in a 40-kilometer race, those who were fast metabolized of caffeine showed a 4.9% faster race time, while those who were slow metabolizers showed a 1.8% faster race time after ingesting caffeine. What about weight training? Caffeine is either consumed as coffee or ingested in, in, or ingested in supplement form before workouts as a means of boosting training intensity and decreasing fatigue. Caffeine is also a primary ingredient in many fat burner supplements based on the fact that caffeine promotes the release of catecholamines such as epinephrine and norepinephrine, uh, which promote the release of uh, fat from fat cells by stimulating an uh, enzyme in fat cells called hormone-sensitive lipase. The medical literature about the effects of caffeine in those who engage in weight training is paradoxical, with some studies showing definite ergogenic effects and others showing little or none. How to explain these differences? A lot has to do with the training experience of the study subjects, as well as the dose of caffeine used in the studies. Most studies show that higher doses of, ke of caffeine, especially six grams, I'm sorry, six milligrams per kilogram of body weight, works best for those seeking ergogenic effects when they lift weights. But how does this pertain to fast and slow caffeine metabolizers? A recent study examined this effect. The study involved 30 resistance trained men. It was a double blind, placebo controlled uh, study, which is the gold standard of studies. They participated in two weight training sessions where exercises were done using a weight equal to 85% of one rep maximum. All exercises were done to failure. The exercises were bench press, leg press, seated cable roll, and shoulder press. The subjects were divided into groups with one group given 6 milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of body weight and the other placebo one hour prior to training. Now, caffeine is known to peak in the blood in 30 to 60 minutes, so this was the caffeine was given just at the right time. The subjects underwent genetic testing to determine if they were fast or slow caffeine metabolizers. The results of the study confirmed that fast metabolizers of caffeine showed far greater ergogenic effects during training compared to slow metabolizers. The fast metabolizers were also able to do more reps and showed less muscle fatigue compared to slow uh, metabolizers. The same likely holds true for the fat metabolizing effects of caffeine. In other words, uh, if you're a fast metabolizer of caffeine, you're going to show greater fat mobilizing effects. If you're a slow metabolizer, you're going to show little to nothing as far as uh, fat mobilization goes. The study explains why other studies show little or no effects of caffeine ingested prior to weight workouts. Those who showed no effects were likely slow metabolizers of caffeine. How can you tell if you're a fast or slow caffeine metabolizer? If you feel jittery or nervous following even small intakes of caffeine, such as a cup of coffee, you are a slow metabolism of creatine, uh, caffeine. You don't have to have genetic testing. All you have to do is judge by the way you react to caffeine. If you get anxiety or, or jittery, uh, if, the, if, you, if it lasts for a long time, uh, you're a slow metabolizer. You don't need genetic testing. Uh, what this means in practical terms is that drinking coffee will produce less health benefits and ergogenic effects for you. Although the natural polyphenols in co caffeine that have uh, coffee that have nothing to do with caffeine, they impart separate health benefits. So 
It's not that drinking coffee will impart no health uh, benefits. <clears throat> it's mainly pertaining to the caffeine content of coffee, in that if you're a slow metabolizer, the caffeine <clears throat> will have mostly negative effects. <clears throat> For those who are fast uh, caffeine metabolizers, <clears throat> Consuming three to six milligrams of caffeine uh, 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 an hour prior to training will produce ergogenic benefits. And contrary to prior belief, this effect does not wear off over time. For years, studies said that you know habitual ca caffeine drinkers lose the ability to get any stimulant or ergogenic effects from caffeine. However, a recent study showed that that was false, that you never really uh, get used to the effects of uh, caffeine. It continues indefinitely. In other words, you don't have to get off of caffeine, get back on it, or stop drinking coffee, get by. You don't have to do it. The caffeine effects keep going because, you know, your body continually produces adenosine, and caffeine is going to interact with those adenosine receptors. Uh, the dose of caffeine that's effective if you are a fast metabolizer is two to four cups a day of, ca uh, of coffee. Uh, four cups is considered also optimum for health. If you start to go over seven cups of coffee, it has a reverse effect, even from fast metabolizers, in that you know you can get some uh, fairly negative effects where you start to add, where your body, let's say, if you drink eight, ten cups of coffee, especially one one after another, uh, you're going to react almost like a slow metabolizer. You're going to get the jitteriness. You might even get a couple of heart palpitations or, or cardiac arrhythmias. Uh, you know, so. So keep it to about four cups, or if you want the actual caffeine amount, that would be about 200 to 300 milligrams uh, if you take a caffeine tablet, no more than that. Uh, avoid at all costs, and I've said this in previous videos, they're selling caffeine powder uh, on various internet, uh, internet sites. They're selling it as a pre-workout uh, aid or pre-workout supplement. This is definitely re uh, not recommended. I would not go near this stuff. Because the uh, the actual uh, suggested dose or safe dose is one sixteenth, I repeat, one sixteenth of a teaspoon. Even if you take one teaspoon, you're taking the equivalent of a hundred cups of coffee at once, and you're going to have heart problems. Uh, there's a couple of cases on record of teenagers who took uh, two teaspoons a day and died. There's nothing wrong with these teenagers. They had no previous heart problems. They just basically took toxic amounts of caffeine and it killed them. Better off to better to stick with regular coffee, or if you don't like coffee, you can have caffeine tablets. And uh, again, as I said in a previous video, uh, if you have any kind of heart problem, pre-existing heart problem, uh, I suggest not having caffeine in any form before you do any kind of endurance or aerobic exercise, because one of the functions of adenosine is to dilate the, dilate the coronary arteries or the arteries that, that feed oxygen and blood to the heart. And uh, if you drink um, a, a good amount of uh, caffeine, if you, drink, if you take an ergogenic amount, as I described earlier in this video, you'll block the effects of uh, adenosine in helping to dilate the coronary arteries. And what you're doing is putting additional stress on your heart. If you already have a heart problem, this could be very dangerous. So that's about it for this video. Uh, Look at the genetic effects of coffee, of caffeine, I should say. Now you know why some people respond much better to caffeine than others, and why some people get really jittery and nervous and who can't handle even any amount of caffeine. Uh, you know, if you want, you can have the genetic testing to determine which whether you're a fast or slow metabolizer. I think it's kind of a waste of money, like I said earlier. Just go by the way you feel. If you have bad effects after drinking a cup of coffee, you're a slow metabolizer. There's no question. That means the caffeine is going to stay in your body a lot longer. The longer it stays in the body, the higher the chance of side effects. If you want further information about nutrition, supplements, exercise science, ergogenic aids, hormonal therapy, fat loss techniques that work, uh, anti-aging research, uh, research uh, that w I, I will uh, give you information on research that will slow down the aging process now. So, you, you know, if you don't have to be decrepit, you don't have to lose all your muscle by the time you're 50, you know, it looked like death and, you know, not being able to walk. I'm going to give you all the information, whatever is known now to prevent that. And you could take preemptive strikes. You could do it now so you don't wind up in a nursing home. Uh, that's just one of the uh, uh, topics in, in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. It's 40 to 50 pages every month. It's more like a monthly ebook. I don't cover the same typical garbage you find on, on uh, science blogs and websites. 
I, I, I like to cover a lot of unusual aspects of nutrition and exercise science. And I almost guarantee no matter what your level of ed education or experience, you will learn something with every single issue of applied metabolics. I promise you that. I know this because I learned my, something myself in just doing the research for these uh, articles. So uh, subscribe today to Applied Metabolics, www.appliedmetabolics.com. Those who are subscribers are welcome to send me brief questions uh, if they have about the articles that appear in Applied Metabolics. I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics site. This email portal is strictly for subscribers. I don't, uh, I don't answer unsolicited questions from non-subscribers. It's strictly for my subscribers. It's like, it's like a benefit of, of having a subscription. An additional benefit is that I have a private Facebook page. As soon as you subscribe, you'll be sent an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where I also answer questions. And I also post a lot of medical, nutrition, and exercise science information, uh, a ton of information uh, almost every day on my Applied Metabolics Facebook page exclusively for subscribers. Uh, you know, you're welcome to leave comments under this video. However, uh, I, I, I'm not going to respond to uh, comments from uh, unsolicited comments asking me questions from non-subscribers. You have to be a subscriber. Uh, I have I don't have a lot of extra time. I'd rather devote my time, the little time I have, to those who support my work as subscribers. So uh, you know, you're welcome to leave comments. But again, if you're not a subscriber, you're, I'm not going to answer your question. That's just the way it is. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local... Bruno's not in the room. I don't know where he is. He probably doesn't like talking, listening to stuff about caffeine. But anyway, uh, if you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter. Adopt a dog. Greatest friends you'll ever have. Best. The best. Take care.